Welcome back to Environmental Forensic Mysteries. I'm Ioana Petrishor and I'm a detective for the environment. In other words, I'm an environmental forensic scientist. So, what is a mystery today? Let me reveal this to you little by little. And right now, I would like to start by introducing to you my colleague and member of the forensic team, Dr. Manny Dekermanje. Manny, welcome. Hi, Anna. Good to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. Well, thank you for coming. And uh, it is a beautiful day here in Southern California. I'm very glad to work with you and solve this particular mystery. Great. All right, well, uh, let's find out more about this mystery. So I will introduce to you Mr. Adrian. Please, can you come, Adrian? Hello, how are you? Hi, Adrian. Nice Hello. to see you again. Just tell us a little bit more about uh, this issue. Yes, I'm really concerned because there was a big fire about half a mile from here. And there was a very thick and black smoke coming and covering all this area. I'm worried... That big building? Uh, yes, over the, there. Building, the building that you can see right over there. Okay. And I'm really worried about this smoke getting into my house and the ash that might uh, be in the house, still be in the house. Also, I have a pool and there was ash going down on the water. I'm concerned about my health, the health of my kids, and I have a couple of pets, so I, I really don't know what they stored in that building, and therefore, if there were some chemicals, what is uh, the composition of that smoke? Okay, well, that sounds, that sounds uh, interesting. So, it doesn't seem like a regular fire. It seems like that's a very industrial uh, facility over there. Um, and it looks like an old facility from, from uh, just driving by earlier. Um, so you don't know what uh, that might, be, might have been storing. If they had toxic chemicals there, um, you said that the smoke went uh, over your home, it could have gotten in through your windows and through your doors. That's right. Uh, and the ash that was coming down could have impacted um, your furniture, your carpeting, um, your, your pool, uh, and also may still be affecting your air quality. Um, so uh, we can totally help figure this out. Um, there's a variety of things we can do uh, to take um, samples uh, to investigate this um, and figure out if there is a concern or if there's no concern. Yes, so many. Uh, what is your suggestion? Um, so we have to do a few things. Uh, okay. You know, certainly we have to go in the home and take some samples. Um, Absolutely. From a variety of places. Uh, there's different ways of doing that. And or maybe from the balcony and from uh, the windows. Yeah. Close all, of the windows. All the places that the smoke could have come in from. Exactly. Um, that's probably where it'll be the most impacted. In the okay. Um, and we need to figure out what was burning. Um, we need to go over there, um, maybe do some interviews, talk to people. Oh, exactly. Maybe we can find uh, some people to also uh, witness right. the event. Right. Uh, even workers who maybe. are involved. Right. That would be wonderful. Maybe they know what was being stored there, uh, just what was what was being uh, burned. Exactly, because based on that, we are going to decide what to check for in our samples. Right, right. Otherwise, we need to check for everything. We can still do that. It will cost Adrian a little bit more money. <laughs> yeah, but if we <laughs> but sample over there, we'll have, right. a, we'll have a good signature of what chemicals to be and looking for. And then we'll for, decide. And then we'll figure out what, what to look for inside the home. I agree. Yeah. So. And, and the other thing we need to do is yes. to try to figure out really where the smoke went. Um, yes. We have, you know, him watching the smoke for some time, uh, but maybe there are other uh, ways to figure out where the smoke went. Uh, we can look for the weather patterns. Yep, weather data. You know, weather there's data. an airport nearby. They, exactly. they store weather data, wind direction, uh, right. wind speed. So we can track that over the time, over the course of the fire. I agree. And uh, check for some aerial photographs and maybe even satellite pictures, uh, who knows, uh, it could have captured even the fire. It's possible, uh, or maybe just news uh, video footage might have captured it, um, so we can look for uh, With so much any, information any these days. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay. Uh, well, uh, let's go to work, uh, start with a uh, home first. Okay, let's go. Let's, go let's do it. We are ready to start sampling. Great, there's a lot of things we can do in this home. That's right. I'm going to get the dust samples okay. uh, closer to the windows and uh, I understood you are going to get uh, indoor air samples. Yeah, so I want to look at indoor air samples and we can, we can take those to see what's in the air. Um, and we can also do sampling on carpets and furniture and even clothes uh, to see if there's any contamination on, on, um, on clothing and, and furniture as well. 
That's a very good idea. And uh, can you describe a little bit the device you are using uh, to sample the indoor air? Sure. Uh, these are called uh, micro cassettes. Um, they're small filters. Um, they are attached to uh, a very powerful pump um, that I have with me. Uh, and all it does is it draws air uh, through the in filter. In time, no? During a uh, certain time, uh, depending uh, how long you'd like to sample for. Right. right, yeah, so we can set it up in the air and take samples over half an hour or five minutes or even longer. Um, and it just captures all the particles on a small filter that's in this cartridge. And Perfect. then that filter is analyzed uh, for whatever you want to look for. And we can look for a lot of things. Perfect. And I suggest maybe even several hours uh, just to have a more um, of an idea what happens over time. Average over time? Absolutely, Average. we can do that. Excellent. Uh, uh, and uh, I have uh, these uh, wipes. Yes. Uh, it's really very easy. Uh, they are in plastic bags. I'm just going to wipe a certain uh, area uh, or on uh, this um, uh, window, very close to a window, and uh, then um, put it in the plastic bag and send it to the lab. Right, and in fact, windows are very important because you know the owner was describing that he saw ash coming down uh, along right. with the smoke plume, uh, and so where it would have entered the home, it would have come through these windows first. Uh, exactly, so, so they probably would accumulate uh, closer to the window, and um, I don't think uh, he uh, did any uh, cleaning. Uh, we hope so that we could we can make we, sure. That's right, <laughs> and we, we should check with him. Yeah, we, there's always places you can sample that haven't been cleaned or that are hard to clean, but we can get out with, with these uh, wipe samples. I agree. So this is uh, the pump you are using to sample uh, the indoor air? Yes, uh, so it's a very powerful pump. It's, it's uh, portable, we can take it anywhere, anywhere we want. It's not too big? No, uh, we can go all around the home, uh, take samples. Um, the hose connects to the cartridge. Um, it's a very powerful, it pulls a vacuum. I see and it pulls the air through the cartridge and whatever's in the air will get sampled on these cartridges. That's pretty, great. Pretty easy. I'm uh, familiar more with uh, summer canisters. You, you know them, yep. that we, we are using many times. Uh, but these are really cool too. Yeah, I've, I've used those. Um, and there's a couple ways of taking air samples, right? You can, you can yes. grab the air. There are techniques to actually grab the air itself in, in, in canisters and even bags, especially made for air. Or you can capture the things that's in the air uh, and filter it out and then send that to the lab. And that's our case. That's what we're doing today. Great. I'm going to get a picture and okay. uh, we are ready. Sounds good. Well, Benny, we are at the pool. While we are waiting for uh, the air sampling to be done, uh, I suggest uh, to get some pool samples. Uh, just make sure uh, the pool is okay. Absolutely. You know, the homeowner described ash coming down uh, along with the smoke. Uh, yes. And if the ash got into the pool, uh, we want to make sure um, to know what's in there. There is always a possibility, although I don't expect there is an issue, but you never know. You never so. know. Well, since we're here, might as well take it. That's right. So you're going to get the sample and I am going to take a picture. Sure. So we'll just use uh, clean vials and we'll just take a water sample. Okay. And the okay. laboratory will look for anything we want them to look for, and we'll get the results as soon as uh, they're done. That's right, and we'll decide what to look for after we go to the facility. Right. right. We are ready to, to go back in home uh, and uh, get the air sampling. Great, let's go. Manny, do you have the results? We do. We got the results back from the lab just today. Great, and I have the results from the white samples. Great. So let's discuss. Let's okay. see what you found. Well, uh, we found a few interesting things. Uh, first of all, uh, we took some samples at the facility that burned down. Okay. And the big thing we found in those samples was lead. It was a lot of lead in the dust. And uh, the as a matter of fact, uh, it was to be expected since they stored batteries. Yes. Yeah, it turns out that part of the facility uh, stores and recycles car batteries. And there's a lot of lead in car batteries. All those batteries That's burn. Right. The plastic and the lead, you know, got in the smoke, so it makes sense that there was lead in those samples. That's true, and so we concentrate on lead and other metals yes. in our uh, samples. Yeah, so lead's a concern. Um, uh, we don't want people to be exposed to lead. Um, so all the samples yes. that we took inside the home, uh, in the air, uh, we look for lead and other metals as well. Okay, uh, did you find any uh, exceedance of lead or other metals in the indoor air? You know, the good news was that in the air, it was all about background levels. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, 
And uh, that's the same with the white samples. Okay. Uh, there are some metals, but they do not exceed uh, what is considered background and uh, of no health risk. Okay, you know, I, I thought that might happen because when we checked the weather data, uh, the wind speed was heading towards the home, uh, but it wasn't heading directly at the home for too long. Uh, so most of the plume, I think, sort of missed the home and missed the windows. Um, so fortunately, we didn't get many of those particles uh, inside the home. It is clear, especially since we checked with Adrian and he told us uh, he didn't clean anything right. since uh, the smoke happened. Uh, so if something was uh, to be carried in the home, we would have seen it. We would have seen it, for sure. Uh, right at the windows, right. right on the carpeting, the smoke would have settled, the ash would have settled. Uh, we would have gotten it, but fortunately, uh, this one was... Uh, had some good results. And we could even save some money for Adrian because uh, there was uh, no need to analyze the full sample anymore. Yep. Isn't it right? So That's we right. didn't do it. Uh, now we are ready to tell him the good news and uh, after that we should celebrate. Sounds good. Let's tell him. Great.